What's good, Washington fans? So it's that time of year again where Mel Kuyper Jr. comes out with his mock draft. I know a lot of people don't care what he has to say, but of course we always talk about it, debate, and conversate about it. Um, a lot of stuff he puts out there is just for shock value. Of course, that's his job. It is what it is. Last year he had us. He mocked us getting Kadarius Tony, the wide receiver who went to the Giants at 19 out of Florida. The year before that he mocked us getting Tua Tungavailoa at quarterback at pick number two. So, of course, a lot of stuff he says does not come true for the most part, but it is intriguing to talk about. You know, he has this um, picking a quarterback at pick 11. I'll get into that today. Um, but I just want to thank you guys for checking out the Elite Channel member stream last night. With my guy uh, Warpath, make sure you guys sub him up. Oscar Josue Montel, make sure you guys sub him up as well. They both do Washington football content. My guy, Kenny Man DMV, does uh, basketball content. He's always hooping. And OG... He's just, he, there's never a dull moment with OG, so make sure you guys follow him on the gram. I got his Instagram down below uh, as well, so make sure you guys follow him on the, on the gram. Uh, but, you know, we talked about quarterbacks. And of course, I know at the end of the day what we're going to do, you know, if I had to bet money, of course, we would probably draft a quarterback. And usually when you draft a quarterback, you have a bridge quarterback. It could be Heineke, which personally I'd rather kind of move on from Heineke just because of the arm strength. I think he just limits the offense. Or we could go out there and sign a free agent. Or, of course, swing big. And get a big name quarterback. You know the big name quarterback thing. I I don't. I'm, I want to be optimistic, but I personally, you know, I, I don't think I, I'm going to be optimistic. But being realistic, I think our the the most option that probably will be happening is drafting a quarterback at pick 11, and then you either have Heineke as a bridge or you sign one of these free agents. Now Jimmy G. That's a whole other conversation. We'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. But I know we all know what Dan Snyder wants to do. He wants to make a big splash. I know it's Ron's team right now. He's the GM. But we were last in attendance. And I think everybody knows that. So it is what it is on that part. But I think most likely the best bet is drafting a quarterback at 11. Now, if we draft a quarterback and start a bridge guy, I'm, I'm basically going to be 5 and 12. That's my prediction already. But like I said, it's, it's a whole different conversation. But like I said, I think. I would bet money that we're going to draft the quarterback at pick 11. That's the most likely scenario for the Washington football team moving forward at the quarterback position. Um, Mel Kuyper has his pick in Malik Willis out of Liberty. The quarterback is 6'1", 215 pounds. Um, you know, of course, the easy take is to say he, he plays like Lamar Jackson, Michael Vick, um, all the dual threat, Jalen Hurts, you know, all the dual threat quarterbacks that you can throw out there, which is it's pretty easy to say, which which – when you watch him, that's kind of what you see. That's kind of what you see. When he, if he does come here, we draft him. You know, we're gonna have to tailor our offense to this guy. You, you, you're not just gonna have him drop back, just like Lamar Jackson. You know, you're not gonna get the best play out of Lamar Jackson or Jalen Hurts or any of the dual threats, scrambling, running quarterbacks. You're just not unless you really unleash and build an offense around them. RPOs, zone reads, quarterback draws, design runs. That's the way you can get the best play out of, of Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts played pretty well down the stretch because. They tailored to his strength. They didn't have him in the pocket, but he did get exposed when he had to sit back in the pocket and, and throw the ball, and they were down by multiple scores. Lamar Jackson has been able to come back and actually throw the football in the pocket. He has been getting better at that um, over the past couple of years. You know, even back with RG3, kind of offenses like that, Colin Kaepernick, just playing to running quarterback strengths. That's what I feel like we would have to do with Malik Willis. I do like him a lot from what I saw. I watched the... Syracuse game. I watched the Army game, which he didn't have a great game against Army. I watched the Virginia Tech game of from last year when they beat them uh, at the buzzer. It was a game-winning field goal. So he, he, he's a good quarterback. I think he has the tools, athletic tools. He, he's electric. He, he's an ankle breaker. Ankle breaker. He can make guys miss in a phone booth, running the football, and he does have a strong arm. He does have a legitimate arm. He, he does have the arm strength where he can drop the ball in the bucket when he's throwing the ball downfield. So, but let me read what Mel Kuyper had to say. Um, it's on ESPN Plus. I do have ESPN Plus, but I'll just read it for you guys who don't have ESPN Plus. You probably find it on Twitter as well. Um, and Malik Willis was picked before he was the first quarterback out off of Mel Kuyper's board, which I don't think is pretty much fictional in my opinion because, you know, Kenny Pickett's probably going to be the first guy off the board. Then Matt Corral after him. And then I think Sam Howell is ahead of um, Malik Willis as well, which I think is going to happen in the draft. Um, so. Uh, he said, time for the first quarterback off the board. You might be surprised that it's Malik Willis, but you really shouldn't be. He was in the quarterback one mix all fall before he faded a little bit in the last stretch of the regular season. The more tape I watch of his past two seasons, the more I talk to evaluators in this league, the more I like him. Put simply, Willis is the most talented quarterback in this class, which I kind of agree. I think 
if you look at the athletic tools combined with arm strength, yeah, I, I, talent. If you're just talking about sheer talent, I, I do agree with Mo Kuyper on this take that he's the most talented quarterback in this class. I I could agree with that, but he is a project. You're gonna have to groom him. And you're really gonna have to coach and and change your system. Is Scott Turner willing to do something like that? Is Scott Turner gonna coach up um, Malik Willis? You know, kind of like what Greg Roman did with Lamar Jackson, Kyle Shanahan did with RG three. And uh, Greg Roman did with other quarterbacks in the past. You know, what Nick Sirianni did with Jalen Hurts, where you're just a running offense, a lot of RPO zone reads, stuff like that, design runs. Is Scott Turner innovative and creative enough to do that and make that work? I don't believe that can happen with Scott Turner. Um, Mel Kuyper also says he didn't always get to show that at Liberty, which didn't have much NFL talent around him. He was sacked an astounding 51 times. Yeah, that's a lot of sacks. It's pretty bad. This is a dual threat signal caller. He rushed for 1,822 yards and 27 touchdowns over the past two seasons with a powerful arm. I'm really excited to see him compete against the other top quarterbacks in the senior bowl in a couple weeks. Like Denver, Washington could be in the veteran quarterback market, but I like the fit with Willis. Washington can't go into the season with Taylor Heineke as the starter. So yeah, it would be rough to go into, into the season with Taylor Heineke. I like Heineke a lot. I thought he uh, had his good moments and whatnot. Got seven wins. He was seven and what eight, seven and nine as a starter, which is not bad for a guy who just came from the XFL a couple years ago and was sitting on the streets on his couch or his sister's couch. So I mean, I, I like Taylor Honey. I give him his props, but I, I just can't really go into the season starting with him. I, I, it's just tough for me to do it. Um, the Kobe Dean went to the Broncos at nine. Just to give you guys some context on the on the mock draft. The Panthers took Charles Cross. That's an, another team that I feel like is going to look for a quarterback. The Panthers are definitely looking for a, for a quarterback. The Broncos look for a quarterback as well. Kenny Pickett went at 18 to the Saints, and Matt Corral went to the Steelers at pick 20. So this kind of shows how fictional this mock draft is. But the Syracuse game, I'll just write, talk about some notes that I wrote from the Syracuse game. He threw some good passes downfield. Um, to lose the game, he fumbled the ball. So he fumbles the ball a lot. He does play hero ball a lot, and he will. Ball security is definitely a concern for me. It's definitely a concern. He fumbles the ball a lot, and that's how they lost the game. They were, they were tied at the end. And then he fumbled the ball and Syracuse got and they, they ended up winning the game. Um, so he doesn't really take what the defense gives gives him, doesn't really check down the ball a lot. He's looking to throw the ball downfield all the time. Accuracy is inconsistent. Um, he did have some games with multiple interceptions against the lower tier competition in that division or conference that they play in. Um, he throws a lot of fastballs. He throws the ball really hard, does have to work on his touch. He can be a, a gunslinger at times, and he's always trying to push the ball downfield, and it does affect his completion percentage. Um, he is ankle breaker. He can make you miss, and he can make guys miss in a phone booth. So he he's entertaining, man. He he puts on a show for sure. He puts on a show for sure. He does a lot of throws off script, running around, and then he'll throw the ball downfield. So he's he's running around a lot. He's looking to run first. Uh, a lot of the times he is in the pocket. So his longest run was of seventy seven yards this year. So he he's electric, man. He is entertaining. He is talented. I mean, the comparisons of Michael Vick, all the running quarterbacks you can think of. That's what I see when I look at Malik Willis. Um. He does extend plays a lot. Um, I mean, he, he's a baller. He is. He just has to go to the right team. Very shifty, very elusive, uh, and can drop it in the bucket as well. Does try to hit the home runs a lot and can extend plays a lot. But he, he does have a really he, – he throws the ball downfield very, very well. He does have the arm strength for sure. You look at the numbers, 27 touchdowns, 12 picks, was sacked 51 times. Like I said, that's a lot of sacks. Rushing yards, rushed for 878 yards this year, and then last year, 944 yards rushing. Uh, completion percentage was 61% this year. Last year, 64% uh, completion percentage, which is not great. Uh, not terrible, but not great. So he does, he does have to work on that. But like I said, he he is a project, and he has to go to the right team and the right system. Here, I fear this would not be the right team. Now, I know I know um, Ron Rivera had Cam Newton. Cam, Cam Newton is different. Cam Newton is a better – he was a better passer coming out than Malik Willis for sure. Malik Willis – I mean, Cam Newton was able to sit in the pocket and throw the ball downfield – in his first couple of years as well. That tailed off, of course, recently. But coming out, Cam Newton was a better passer than um, Malik Willis, in my opinion, from what I've seen. But like I said, it has to be the right situation. And I would I don't know if I pick him at 11, but I got to see how, how he does at the Senior Bowl. If he does as well at the Senior Bowl in the Combine, then, of course, he's going to get hyped up and he's going to get pushed up even more. So we just got to see on that. He did go to Auburn. He lost out of Bo Nix in a competition, and then he left and he went there. He's six foot one, 215 pounds. Um... Let me see how old he is real quick. Age doesn't really matter to me. I mean, all these guys are young. Kenny Pickett's with like 24, 25. I don't really care how old these guys are. As long as they can play, that's all that really matters to me. I don't really care. Um, let me see how old, is it? How, you, how old he is. Yeah, age age doesn't really matter to me. Like I said, it has to be the right situation for this guy. 
and can Scott Turner coach him up and put him in the right system to succeed? Uh, one comparison was Jordan Love with Rocket Shoes. So Jordan Love hasn't been great so far. So like I said, he, this might be a guy where he has to sit a year, he's a project, and then, you know, we got to throw him in there and let him play. And Scott Turner has to tell his offense around him. So you guys let me know what you guys think about the pick. Like I said, this is just something to talk about because I don't think it's really going to happen. Um, but we'll see. You just never know what happens until March or April in the draft. All right, you guys, health to the football team. Peace.